So as promised, air strikes only. <laughs> I'm gonna see in this video if I can get over 60,000 damage in the D7 Provincia, all right? This ship is probably not the best choice just due to the difficulty of uh, lining up these airstrikes. They're just such a small box, right? As you can see on screen compared to the easier to lead uh, tech tree ships. But what this one does have is this insanely fast reload and the ability to charge up three uh, airstrike cooldowns, right? And this gives us a lot more flexibility in who we target and how many times we drop, leading us to potentially drop one or two strikes on someone, hopefully get some fires, and then try and follow up when they damage control for some permanent fires, that kind of thing. Something you should know, this ship actually has a bug in it currently that should be fixed soon, apparently, where it currently has a 17 second lead time instead of the, I believe, 15 seconds that you're seeing right now. So that's a bug that came in with patch 10.9. I'm not sure how that one got in, but it does even affect some of the tech tree Dutch cruisers, but apparently it is just a bug. So the lead time will go back to the 15 seconds that it is in this video, but that still is difficult to lead 15 seconds with such a small box. You do, if you're gonna play this ship normally, probably rely on your main guns a little more than this. Uh, this is just a fun little challenge I wanted to try for myself just to see if I could do it which 60,000 damage isn't a lot for a tier eight cruiser. I think it's a lot to get out of your gimmicky airstrike thing. That's certainly much more than you get out of torpedoes, let's say out of something like an Otago. And I think that is a good way to just show how powerful these airstrikes could be once you learn how to lead them. Unfortunately, this first game, the team kind of got pushed off the map, so we're not gonna get a ton of damage out of this one, but I just wanted to show you this one as an example of, well, it's pretty difficult to do this, <laughs> but it's a fun challenge if you want to go try it. I suggest waiting for that uh, fix, that patch to go through before you end up doing this one. Something you should also know is in patch 10.9, the airstrikes now have a consumable, not a consumable, sorry, they have an upgrade where you can reduce the reload time and buff the health of the planes. And that is massive. That is huge for a lot of these ships. I've been playing the tier 10 and the reload on it's around 72 seconds base down from 90 seconds base. So the DPM of these airstrikes has certainly gone up. Now, I really don't like having airstrikes in the game. I really think that they're making the game worse. <laughs> I think I've been pretty clear about that. Planes are not a great thing for this game. Uh, when most of the good gameplay is centered around surface-to-surface -surface ship combat. But I do want to show that these airstrikes are pretty insane when you get the right situation. Not going to be every match, not going to be every game, but given the right islands, these things are pretty ridiculously strong. And I don't think anything really quite shows how strong they can be, like a map like Two Brothers. And, well, let's head there next. <laughs> we didn't quite get our goal on the uh, previous game, but Two Brothers is perfect for this. You just sit in the middle and rain down these airstrikes on people. I play this a little bit poorly here. I could have done a better job with my usage of airstrikes. You can see just how fragile the planes used to be. Uh, they're much tankier than this now with that better upgrade, but you can see we lost basically everything and hardly got any damage on this Queen Elizabeth. I'm gonna spend a lot of time trying to kill this Queen Elizabeth to really very poor results, just because I kind of tunnel vision here, honestly, and there's just too much AA around him. I should be going after someone else and maybe sending myself through the middle channel a little bit early would be a good way to go about things. Maybe looking for that Vladivostok, that kind of thing. Um, well, I know this isn't the most interesting image right now, looking at the low res textures we're giving us on these uh, mountains, but this is damage coming through an island. <laughs> this is free damage through an island from a surface ship. So, uh, yeah, maybe not the uh, best game design, huh? Getting that fire an extra little bit of damage. And yes, again, not the most damage this game, but just you wait for the third game. The third game is where we really turn things up a little bit. 
I was sitting in the channel gap there, waiting to get spotted, and then I just moved forward quickly. I wanted that early heads up that the mines was coming. It's one of the reasons I actually didn't go down the channel. This is not something that is easy to do at all, but it's fun. It's a funny little thing. I'm cutting out a lot of these games though, because it is a little bit boring waiting these 40, 50 seconds for these strikes just to have maybe one or two hits. <laughs> I missed a lot, so you're not seeing all of those. You can see the time is uh, skipping forward very quickly in a lot of these games. In fact, we're nine minutes into this match and I only have 15,000 damage. Shows you how tunnel visioned I was on this Queen Elizabeth. The damage can be good when you get the right strikes, but I've been missing a lot. Leading this is pretty difficult, and of course, there's a lot of AA surrounding this guy, so not the best results so far out of this one but we'll pick it up later on towards the end. <laughs> I'm just kind of surprised that these airstrikes are this strong. On ships with main guns, on ships with actually really, really good anti-aircraft, decent concealment, I'm kind of surprised that Wargaming made these airstrikes so effective. And that's a little bit concerning <laughs> as far as the uh, future of this game, but every little bit of damage here to me, seems like free damage. It's something that I'm not risking my ship over. There is zero danger to me here. I'm just clicking on a part of the ocean and getting damage on these ships. And while they do have the opportunity to dodge because there is a 15 second lead time, assuming this bug does get fixed, that 15 second lead time doesn't really take into account rudder shifts. And a lot of rudder shifts on these battleships at higher tiers are pretty, pretty slow. So hitting these targets is relatively easy. And at the same time, this Vladivostok can't really afford to just turn broadside to dodge these strikes, right? There's a Tirpitz right in his face and a destroyer that's probably launching torpedoes at him. So I think that's something that gets missed a lot when people say just to dodge these strikes, it's pretty simple. Well, if you're going to push in and try and be effective with your ship, there's sometimes where you're limited in your maneuverability options. And, you know, that is some sort of counterplay and that, and it's adding to the game, but I don't think it's a very good addition to the game. It just incentivizes people to stay at the back. That was a 10,000 damage strike with a fire. So depending on your RNG with the bombs, you know, we hit every bomb there on his nose, which is 30 mil 32 millimeters, which we can actually pen. Um, that is one thing you should know with these bombs. They pen 34, I believe, so. The main threshold is 32, that's what we're looking to pen here. And almost getting the kill here. Again, trying to stay disciplined and not use our guns. It's super tempting sometimes. <laughs> but 47,000 damage, not bad for how horribly I played this map and tunnel visioned I got on that Queen Elizabeth. And while leading is difficult, it's not too bad once you get used to the 15 second lead time. That's a long range Montana salvo, North Carolina salvo. And another fire on this poor Sharnors breaking his torpedo tubes and a reasonable amount of damage. It was 55,000. We're nearly at our goal here. And there's a Colorado left. And Colorados get absolutely destroyed by these airstrikes because they have no armor anywhere. And unfortunately, this game is starting to look over. You can see we're capping the base. I was really hoping somebody else would leave the base at this point, but uh, this Colorado right on the border, we can't quite reach him. And unfortunately, I think we're going to cap out before we actually get this strike off, because we do have to wait 15 seconds. I also just missed this one. If you look at the traje trajectory, <laughs> I was just going to miss it, so not a big deal at all. And here we finally get to our quote-unquote best game. <laughs> um where I don't really do much for the first four minutes or so of this match, but we're waiting for people to push in. And Estuary is one of those maps where you can have a huge amount of impact as a light cruiser, just because there's so many central islands that allow you to play and affect a large portion of the map, getting closer in without getting spotted and having these big giant islands in between you and some of these bigger battleship salvos. But we're gonna be farming this Bismarck. This Bismarck is going to donate his, most of his HP bar to us. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see what he's going to do. Cause again, 15 second lead time. We do want to use these airstrikes intelligently. We don't want to just miss them as we do have a bit of a reload on them. Now, 
if this is the current patch and this bug gets fixed, I might do this again with the, I believe, 42, 47, 45 second reload on these airstrikes. Uh, that could be pretty spicy. 17 second lead time though, I have tried it with the broken or bugged out airstrikes. 17 seconds is really hard to lead. <laughs> it's only two seconds more, but uh, that two seconds feels like an eternity. So don't recommend playing them right now until that sort of gets sorted out. But this Bismarck damage conned our, I believe, double or triple fire, whatever we got there earlier. And we get a permanent double fire on him with our last strike there. So I think that's going to be the strategy with these airstrikes. If you can have someone who's bow in like this, uh, it's unlikely people are going to do that these days with uh, submarines, aircraft carriers, airstrikes, all the HE spam, torpedoes. Like everything is designed to keep you from pushing in. So bow in is a really bad idea. Um, for more reasons than just these airstrikes. So it's unlikely you're gonna see these, but uh, it was a nice little showcase of how uh, these airstrikes can be used if you get lucky and somebody decides to just sit bow in for you. This Bismarck does accelerate almost out of the way, but unfortunately the fire burned out and we instantly relight them. <laughs> I would not be too happy if I was this Bismarck. So I would, uh, Probably get really upset and then uh, complain about not being able to push in or something like that. That's ten. That tends to be how my games go when I play a Bismarck and just try to push in. And I know the correct answer is obviously, well, don't push in then, right? So that is the learning lesson, I guess, from this video is if there's a Dutch cruiser, uh, don't be stationary, constantly be maneuvering. And if you can, try to be outside their 13 or so kilometer range, much like submarines you do want to just stay outside their range completely. That is the best way to deal with them. Oh, Bismarck damage conned. Well, we should probably wait for that to go and then try and light another fire on him. We're already up to 40,000 damage and we're six minutes into this match. And I know we did get a little bit lucky with these damage controls, but six minutes in 40,000 damage only from airstrikes. That's a lot. And this didn't even take that long. This was three games or so where I just decided to do uh, airstrikes only with uh, Twitch chat having some little uh, <laughs> channel point bets going on in the background as well. Seeing if I could get to 60,000. And well, I think we could get a little bit more off of this Bismarck. I think it might be getting to the time where I need to go to the other side of the map. Nice now is pretty hard to hit considering how fast it is. And of course the DD and the cruiser over here probably not going to get the best drops off on them. So time to move, get one last strike or so on this Bismarck. And there is a three quarter HP Nelson. And of course, Nelson well known for its massive ability to heal. So I'm hoping that I can get the last little bit of damage out of that guy. And we get another parting fire and a bunch of damage on this Bismarck. <laughs> Poor guy, honestly, I, I feel bad for this guy just because he played it wrong, I know, but man, it feels bad when all that damage is coming in from someone you just can't see and can't do anything about. <laughs> uh, it's just unfortunate. And I say that because I've been on that guy's, uh, on that side of this engagement, and it doesn't feel very good at all. But here we are, we finally moved across the map towards this Nelson. It's a little while later, and uh, yeah, nearly 50,000 damage. So it seems like we're gonna get the damage number we're looking for, which was 60,000 damage this game. Air strikes only on a tier eight. I think I could maybe do this on the tier 10 a little bit better, just cause it has more bombs and now with its improved reload. I think maybe just because of it being easier to hit. I don't know. We'll see if I end up trying something like this with the tier 10, although the tier 10, given its decent firepower and okay uh, okay armor, allows it to play pretty aggressively and uh, actually do a lot of work just as a zoning ship. So I've talked about that a little bit before, but I've had a couple pretty crazy games that I might end up posting here in the next little bit. I don't want to overwhelm with the airstrikes because uh, I feel like that can get a little bit boring. So we'll go back to a couple uh, a couple brawling battleship videos coming up later on this week. I think that would be a fun thing to do, given all of my focus on submarines and airstrikes recently. Get back to some of those classic videos where I'm just pushing in a battleship, having a good time. Those games are a little more rare these days with all everything that's been introduced, but they can happen, and I think they're a little bit more enjoyable to watch. 
As we get up to 56,000 damage, we're like three, 4,000 damage away from this uh, goal of 60,000. <laughs> Pretty good so far, honestly. And this Nelson appears to be going forward and we can just drop another strike on his head. <laughs> Of course, I would get better damage if I actually used my guns, but that's not really the point. The point is just to see what is possible with these airstrikes. And this is a weird thing because I feel like these airstrikes are pretty strong already, and I don't know why Wargaming gave them that extra upgrade in the uh, upgrade slots. I think it's fourth slot, I believe, takes away propulsion or rudder shift. Um, I don't know why they gave them that massive reload cooldown and tankier planes. These planes already didn't seem to die very much. It's only when you threw them into like five ships would the planes actually die. So a really, really strange decision, in my opinion, to actually buff these ships um, as we could do. I think that was 9,000 damage in a fire. I haven't seen this game for a while. 9,000 damage in a fire from one strike. And I know it's a Nelson, poorly armored and all that, but... Uh, that's a lot if that's reloading every 40 seconds or so with this new uh, upgrade. And that's it. 72,000 damage is what we got up to on this one. Uh, I'm going to show this one at the end because, you know, it's an aircraft carrier, right? We got we to gotta crush an aircraft carrier at the end. Um, unfortunately, though, <laughs> I don't realize how fast these uh, tier 6 aircraft carriers accelerate. Look at that guy just zooming away. So unfortunately, we miss every single one there. So this could have been maybe a close to 100k game if I had actually led that properly. Unfortunate, but 72,000 damage. Airstrikes only. And we didn't really help our team all that much. We just kind of farmed battleships. But airstrikes only, that's pretty good. If we can even get 10, 20, 30k out of our main guns in a game like this, that's 100k out of a tier 8 cruiser. That's not bad. Um, now, given that, I think it's interesting to compare it to a ship like an Otago, another premium tier 8 cruiser, a ship I have quite a few games in, and I'm averaging around 80,000 damage in that one. Now, remember, I, I sucked back in the day. I was really bad at this game, so some of those games were from when I wasn't very good, but I'm averaging 71k or so in this ship, and uh, I think that's gone up over the last uh, couple times I've played it since then. I'm around 15 games right now, but... This is a really good ship, and airstrikes are surprisingly really, really good uh, in this game. I thought they would have made them harder to use or just not as effective, but the 32 mil pen and the fire chance makes them pretty insane. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.